Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the ABZ Show. With me, your host, Abe. Today, we have a very special guest, somebody I've known for almost 20 years, somebody that has worked for us 20 years, almost 15 years ago, back in the days with Crystal. Sammy, how are you? Hey, I'm good, my man. How are you? You all right? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. So, Sammy, please tell my audience, who is Sammy and what do you do? Uh, well, uh, go, go, going back to when we first started working for you, that was, um, I think, kind of where we developed most of our, our, our skills there. Um, uh, we worked with, uh, with uh, Abe over here and Crystal at approximately 2006, 2007, I think. We were working as a, in, a, in a sales kind of environment over there. We were running one of your projects. And I remember you came up to me one day in the, in the elevator and you were like the big man, the boss, you know? <laughs> and um, you, you, I, I still now to remember, I'm like, you know, we're going to keep in touch for a pretty long time. And uh, you're like part of the main reason why we, uh, we're, we're here right now with what we're doing. So currently what I'm doing right now is we have um, founded a company called Fine Diner. Um, Fine Diner initially brings a, um, a uh, home, it's a premium home delivery experience that brings you a fine dining or a, um, a really um, extraordinary delivery experience right at home. We started this around a year ago. Um, we started it with a startup bootcamp as an accelerator program. And uh, we've been operational for approximately a year, a year and a bit right now. And yeah, we've never been happier. Good stuff, good stuff. And I know, uh, I know you, you have that hustler built into you. I remember, I, I even honestly remember the day we, I interviewed you to hire you uh, the first time. Um, and I, I remember seeing all that energy, you being very, very, very good with both follow up and understanding and reading the room really well. So this is something, uh, I guess that is two key uh, factors in in you know that hustler persona uh and again I, you know a lot of times people tell me oh don't say hustler it's not a good word but you know i i mean hustler in all its glory and not in you know not in the ripping off people kind of way right so 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 tell me more sammy so uh, i want to know more about you know um before we talk about your entrepreneurial journey let's talk about fine diner right now i know you started it in covid where people were craving that experience right and and, and i, I want to know because i know when you came in to start a boot camp you pitched something completely different and then mm. pivot into that so tell me walk me through that whole process what did you come in with and how did you ended up being here so do you know how a lot of people say that usually they invest in the entrepreneur, but not really the idea? Um, it couldn't be more true than this. So I came up with a completely, uh, let's just say, unfunctional idea um, coming into a startup boot camp and um, using my brilliant uh, talking skills. I managed to talk a few people into thinking that it can be 100% possible. A, a, a lot of them, I think, realize that this is the, the start of the journey. And this guy is driven and he, he wants to make something. We just don't know what it is. I mean, I heard the term a thousand times. Like you figured out a supply and you figured out a demand, but you don't know how to get it from point A to point B yet. And that is the whole entire business model of how you're going to kind of um, structure that. We started off with, with Startup Bootcamp with an idea to kind of... Um, uh, limit food wastage that is uh, produced by hotels. So we realize that they're throwing away thousands and thousands of, um, of tons of food uh, due to the lack of efficiency of their kitchens. Also, we realized that there was a problem that uh, a lot of the, the hotels right now, they, they don't really fully maximize the usages of their kitchens while they still have the best and the most expertise when it comes to kitchen equipment and kitchen staff. So um, the main business line behind hotels in terms of like restaurants is to cater for the in-house guests, not anything to do with deliveries. Their main business line is basically that. So uh, when you take that into consideration, you can realize that they have efficiency of dishing out up to 300 or 400% more meals than what they're actually catering for. 
So once you realize that, you realize that there, there's that, that's your factory right there. And then you have a lot of people that are in demanding, demanding of good quality food. And you just got to kind of connect the dots. Um, so when we came in, we started uh, doing that. We, we realized when COVID hit that we're not able to kind of uh, fulfill that particular um, objective. And we had to pivot. It was a fight for survival. And uh, I'm, not, I'm not one to kind of like give up. I'm, you know, you hit into a wall, you hit into a thousand walls, you just keep going forward. You turn right and you find another way. And I guess we kept turning and pivoting until we came up with the solution. I like, I like that. And I, I'm, I always tell my the companies that even, you know, I help and mentor, even in the programs, that I am always expecting the pivot. You know what I mean? Because um, people sometimes come in with either a passion business or come in with uh, a business that they can refine from their job. You know, they, they do something really well and, and then realize literally a couple of months into their idea saying, you know what? There's a reason why we were doing things that way and not this way. And then they say, okay, so, but there's something there. Let me play around until I find what, what I can nail. And I think you guys went through that exercise. I know I walked you through a lot of that exercise. Mm. And um, it, it's a very big uh, part of your learning curve. You know what I mean? Um, I, I even remembered um, a, a couple of stories when you were even um, – uh, taking call, I mean, making calls for sales. And I remember we were, I think you were on a, an account called Little Gifts, right? When we mm. were selling, you know, pet accessories and stuff like that, right? And you always had a way in with everybody, you know, by even changing your approach or even talking to different people in the same organization. To get what you do. <laughs> and I, and, I, and, and it, it is true, bro. It is, it is true that, um, uh, at your level, the idea level, it's all about the entrepreneur and never about the idea. Because as you said, you went through two or three iterations. You, the first two iterations, you really wanted to, uh, uh, you know, uh, attack and fix this whole sustainability food issue with hotels. But then, you know, you had to fight regulation. You had to fight off people's mindsets. You had to find out the whole cleanliness aspect. And then you said, you know what? Let's, you kept the idea about the efficiency of hotel kitchens and then you won another idea. So fantastically well. So mm. in the past life before that, tell us more about what you used to do. So when you, you were right about like um, the Crystal Call, I think Crystal Call was a great um, experience for us to kind of build up and hone in on some of the skills that we really um, use right now. I, I think everybody should work in a sales job if they're going to becoming an entrepreneur or they want to lead a company. You find a lot of CEOs, not, not as many tech-driven CEOs as much as um, you'd find that, that there's a sales-driven and uh, uh, CEOs out there. Um, reason being, in, for, or in order for you to kind of build something, um, you really have to be able to, um, first of all, sell it. And then second of all, you have to be able to kind of navigate around different types of people. And you, you hit the nail, uh, the, the nail on the head there. Um, we used to sell on, on Crystal Call. We used to sell on the phone. It was really uh, uh, different than selling face-to-face -face because you're literally just getting on a call and talking to the guy, trying to pick up from his tone of voice, uh, what kind of person he is, and you really have to focus on what they're saying and listening and uh, making your, your choices there and your decisions there and um, implementing kind of a procedure that then generates kind of um, into a, um, uh, a sale or uh, into a prospect and then generating the cash and the revenue. Um, I think those kind of skills really help you kind of um, build it up. It builds your resilience also to rejection and um, it builds um, your resilience uh, to find solutions rather than to be problem oriented. And uh, it's, um, it, it's quite a, a difficult or psychologically difficult um, thing to do. And I don't think that everybody can be naturally good at it, but um, it is definitely a, skin, a skill that you need um, in this kind of... Um, business and, and it's true because um you know people keep thinking that you know call centers uh a call center job is easy it's not easy at all because especially for sales because sales at least you can read the room you have the body language aspect well on the phone 
the only thing that you can really deal with is like pace of your conversation is the tone you know you can you can you know uh, i worked in a call center for 15 years of my life and i can tell you i can hear when people smile i can hear i can you know know when the people are beginning to get angry i know i mm. and and you used to see me do that even when i would walk by and then uh, then i would turn and i know somebody is on a really bad call or something like that because you kind of develop that sixth sense of that and and i do agree with you i think uh, uh you know especially in tech or actually any entrepreneurial job smes uh you know we, uh, we've had uh guests like tamer uh from uh joe bedu and everybody mm. like their sales needs to be a part of the entrepreneurial journey you know some people hate to sell but you know what people buy you before you the before they buy the product right so people 100 percent. you know so and that whole sales aspect is very important in any entrepreneurial journey tech or non-tech yeah yeah um i i do agree but coming in like as full-on sales also doesn't really um uh <laughs> it, it can be a bit um you, you need a bit of both that's what i think yeah as an entrepreneur you know you, you learn that you got to wear a lot of different hats and you learn that you do um you have to do a lot of different jobs, right? So my day-to-day -day looks like coming in, working on new menu designs. I'm not a chef though. Coming in, working on new concepts. Um, coming in, working on uh, marketing plans and marketing procedures. So I'm not a marketing guy. Coming in, working on uh, different ads. I'm not an ad guy. Coming in, writing content. I'm not a content guy. So what are you? You know, it's just a, just a, a bit a bit of a mind boggle. You become schizophrenic at the end of it, right? Yeah. You're yeah. wearing so many different hats, it's, but that's the beauty of it. It's true because, um, again, like uh, you come in as a domain expert in one thing. Like I, I think you're you were very good at sales, but uh, you know nobody tells you when you're an entrepreneur that you know being an entrepreneur actually is, is a very lonely job because mm -hmm. you're gonna have to start up. Uh, sorry, you're gonna have to start doing everything yourself, right? And as you said. You need to learn how, like even basic stuff, like uh, how do I post an ad on Facebook, right? Now mm -hmm. it's really a wizard, but you've never done it before. It's always that fear of that first, you know, and the fear of failure always is there uh, lingering in the back of my mind or your mind, right? So uh, yeah. it's something that is very uh, difficult to deal with. But I think once you overcome it and then you, you, you know, you say, you know what, uh, what's the worst going to happen? I think that whole rock bottom situation where like, you know what, people don't know this brand anyway. If they, if this, <laughs> you can always move on. Right. So find something else. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, so, so tell me more about what your support system was in the beginning. Like who helped you? Like, you know what I mean? Tell me more about your co-founder you know, uh, balance and stuff like that. Definitely, like there was a lot of help, uh, and I needed a lot of help. Uh, I I can be very ungrounded sometimes, and I just want to do ten thousand things all at once. And um, you know, realizing your 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 weaknesses is not really a weakness because you if you don't admit that you have certain problems, uh, how the hell are you going to fix them, right? Um, so I, I had a really great grounding system. My my brother and he's my co-founder also. Um, he he was very good at keeping me on the on the ground, you know, and not going too crazy because um, sometimes sometimes you kind of need that anchor. Uh, I had a lot of mentors. I was always talking to you also. I remember you told me that before. Like, what's the worst that can happen? What you're gonna go and um, find a job somewhere else? Uh, you close down the company or? That, it's not it's not really that big of a deal when you when you, when you have somebody else telling you that that kind of perspective it really kind of um puts you a little bit at ease never really goes away the fear the, nobody likes to fail you know nobody likes to lose i definitely hate losing and um you know just hearing that and kind of putting it into perspective that the worst that can happen is that you're going to have to go and look for a job and you're going to have a pretty kick-ass CV out of it because you've found a company that's actually generating a revenue and blah, blah, blah. And you have a really sharpened up a lot of skills. Other than that, it's, it's not really instant. It's not really too bad. Um, I think the lingering fear in, in the back of my head is not really on about financial stability or uh, money. It's more about the failing or failing completely. You fail every day. You know, but to fail and give up and close the company and admit defeat, 
that's a hard one. You know, that's that's going to be that's a difficult one. I, I can tell you, you know, like I've I've had my share of failures and companies I have to close down. And honestly, for me, um, I, I'm not used to it. And nobody's ever used to failure, and it does drain you, and it does you know put you in a place where, yeah, it's not a comfortable place, but it also grounds you. You know what I mean? You you cannot. Like I can tell you, I've learned a lot more from my, the failed ventures than the successful, mm. because you know how to correct and avoid certain things. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of times, um, and I, I think I ran this exercise with you, but I don't think you know you I did. And you, you ask, well, what is your first more most important hire? And then some people say some crazy, crazy ass stuff. You know, uh, like I remember we were talking to a founder and his first hire, he wanted a personal assistant. And I'm like, okay, this is when I, you know, I start getting, angry. you know what I mean? Like instead of this person hiring a marketing person or a salesperson, logically, it's always going to be either tech, uh, in tech, some technical or some sales. In any entrepreneurial venture, it's always sales first because mm. You need to let people know about your product before you even try to sell it, right? They tell you stupid stuff like a uh, graphic designer or, uh, and I'm like, what? Like, why? You know what I mean? Like you can get all of that outsourced and how much, how much design do you need to, to get a full-time person? Anyway, it, it just shows you how people think and how, what's the logic behind some of the people. And some of them clearly have never ran a business before. So, so that's, so I think I, I think you answered properly when you said I think I need more sales. Yes, hundred percent. Um, if I was, we still haven't made a first hire. By the way, we've been running for a year. We've generated approximately a million dirhams worth of revenue, and we still have not made a hire. We made freelance hires because yeah. that's more efficient, and um, but making a full time hire and getting somebody on your payroll it's a big commitment. And um, really, what are you going to use them for? Um, it's a great question to actually have, you know, like um, who would be your first hire? I mean, hiring a PA, I can imagine why an entrepreneur would do that. And I think that it's because a lot of entrepreneurs, they like to offset a lot of the work that they have to do yeah. um, into to somebody else. But it's not very wise for the business because if you're not doing your job, you're out there on the beach and not hustling. And uh, by the way, I love that term hustling because that's exactly what we do. We try to figure out where the, the next bit, bit of cash is and how we're going to kind of make it into there. And, you know, you go out and you hunt every single day. And if you don't hunt, you don't eat. It's just very simple. And that's the definition of hustling. Um, but yeah, you, if you don't do the work, you don't put it in, you're not going to get anything back. You're not going to get the returns. You see it when you slack off a little bit. You see how everything drops. It's very dependent on, on you. 100%, 100%. So, so, Sammy, tell me, what is one thing that you regret doing in the last, let's say, 10 years or 15 years? Oh, uh, that's a tough one, to be honest. I'm not really one to do, to do much regretting. Uh, if, I, if, I, if you wanted to go back and say what I've done things better, I'd be a lot more efficient. That's, that's for sure. Okay. Um, I think, I, think um, uh, I, really, I really don't know how to answer that, to be honest. Well, that shows me that you have, like, honestly, you know, you never take, uh, uh, you know, that serious, which is good because, you know, uh, regrets usually weigh people down and it takes a lot longer for people to bounce back from a regret, right? So, like, I tell people I have no regrets. I have a couple of ideas I should have avoided, but is it a regret? It always led into something different or better, right? You know what I mean? So, but never really pushed me back you know sometimes you regret investing in a company or in a stock or in crypto or whatever right mm -hmm. but, but is it is it that bad of a word to regret you say maybe okay it's a lesson learned that's what i keep using mm -hmm. so L lesson learns i have a lot of them um we see whenever somebody asks me what's your biggest regret i i turn around and i i start thinking about certain questionable decisions that i've made and then I come to realize that if you track down those questionable decisions or whatever it is that you made that caused you a kind of a heartache or a failure or whatever, you come to realize that something good did come out of it at the end of the day. And would you do well with or without that? 
and it's a huge analytical thing. Like I would imagine that I'd have to sit down and kind of figure out if this is really a decision that I really didn't want to make and how would it affect the current scenario? I'm happy with where we're at right now. Um, I, I'm Okay, fine. Every entrepreneur is overworked. Every entrepreneur is um, uh, trying to, to sit here and trying to make it. There's a lot of stress on his shoulders and all that stuff, but still you're happy because you're creating something here. You're, you built something that actually kind of functions. Um, you built a system and uh, you get a lot of recognition for that. And when somebody does recognize it, it feels really good. It feels really good to, uh, to have that acknowledgement, you know? Oh, it's good. It's good. I, I think, you know, I think there's something wrong with, you know, I'm going to be very vague when I say this, when the way of how society thinks, you know, they, uh, you know, they look at these great big uh, unicorns or these successful people, they, they link that to money, but it's not always about money. It's about, you know, like impact, you know what I mean? Like, uh, mm-hmm. I'm a part of the Endeavor Network and they're impact driven entrepreneurs, you know, people that change something in people's lives. Right. So, uh, and I feel that you're a very impact driven person as well. So, you know, I think money is always, as I keep saying on the show, money is not the goal, but it's actually a result of where do you want to get to, you know, like a hundred percent. So, all right, let's, let's lighten it up a bit. So, um, and so my question to you is, if you would like to mimic a superhero, who would that be? Or if you want, you know, if you wish you had a superpower, what would that be? You can do both too, if you want. Uh, we, we're referencing Marvel or I know, I know you love Marvel. <laughs> I'm actually more of a DC guy, but still, uh, there's all kinds of like people were saying all kinds of stuff. It doesn't have to be a superhero like that everybody knows or whatever and mm. ironically nobody has asked me this question but i'm not going to answer my question anyway but I, the floor is yours <laughs> great i'm very curious what your answer would be to be honest but yeah we'll get to that later maybe uh, maybe like um do you, do you know that, that that show um if you remember that guy that takes that pill and it makes him incredibly analytical he was able to turn like hundred dollars that that would be a pretty cool super limitless yeah i love that absolutely love it without the bad side effects of course but i think it's a very realistic kind of thing that we can possibly maybe maybe work towards you know (laughs) definitely would have loved it but what would his superhero power be though i well he he is kind of like a a superhero with his analytical thinking right i mean he would be incredibly you'd be analytical thinking man is that what it is uh, i don't know that doesn't sound too good saying it like that but (laughs) analytics it's kind of (laughs) sounds like like a rapper on rogue right so uh but I have to say that is something I, I have not heard. I've done quite a bit of these shows and I have not heard anybody say that. That's definitely unique. Uh, I mean, definitely well-read and uh, very uh, analytical like this. So, uh, I guess so. Or you could be Iron Man, you know. Uh, but uh, it's, a, it's, a, uh, it's just, um, it will be getting into a lot to, to realizing that this day and age, it's all about data. And the more and more I'm going forward with this kind of journey, the more I realize that if you're able to read and verify certain market trends, that you'll be able to win a lot more. And uh, I think that's incredibly useful. I actually realize I'm starting to think I might even change your uh, name on my phone from Sammy <laughs> Fa- Ali- <laughs> Diner to Sammy Analytical. So- Sammy Analytical. You know, they, talk, they talk about all those. <laughs> you know, wear the t-shirts with the big A and then just, you know, keep delivering. Like I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make that t-shirt. I'm going to make that t-shirt. <laughs> so, Sammy, we're, uh, we're about to close our show. Please, you know, feel free to tell my audience anything that you want to tell them before we close off the show. The floor is yours. Um, if we're talking to entrepreneurs, um, talk to people. It's the best thing that you can do. Um, I think for a year or something, I've uh, completely disappeared because I was trying to make something work. And uh, it does have kind of um, a, uh, I think, well, who was it that said this? Like Bella, I think, I was talking to her at one point. 
And she said the most kind of support that any entrepreneur can get is a psychological one. I couldn't agree more. So find a good support system. Um, uh, talk to people. Talk to your mentors. Uh, talk to your friends. And um, uh, make sure they know what's going on with you. And they'll be able to kind of set you in the, in the right path. And uh, keep smashing away. Keep hustling. Amazing. Love it. Love it. Keep hustling always. Once again, thank you very much, Sammy. We do have a hashtag called uh, Real Talk No Nonsense. So please follow mm. that hashtag. And again, it was a pleasure having you and best of luck with Wine Diner. And until next time, take care. No, thanks, Abe. Have a good one, buddy. 